Hey guys, this is Malavar TC1. I'm doing the rest of the Infinite Arena, finishing it up. As you can tell, I've already done the Valiant's course, and I've also done the Tricksters. I'm going to be moving along to the Goddesses, which is the easiest one, but after I finish it, obviously there will be a cutscene at the end that talks about what the Infinite Arena was fully about. We know that the gods here are playing a few tricks on us as a group and trying to figure out what it is that they exactly want. Are they at war with each other? Are they not? What do they want with the Warrior of Light blank, etc, etc. In the past two videos for the Valiant Gate and for the Goddess Gate, I did two different triads of uh, what's going on with everything, you know? So I did politics, the triad of politics. I did the triad of video game systems and which big three big companies. Today it's going to be a final triad. And I'm going to go on a more philosophical route here. I'm going to do the triad of past, present, and future. And which one is the Valiant, which one is the Goddess, which one is the Trickster, okay? So, I'm going to start off with what's really easy is the future. The future is, of course, the Trickster. Because you never know what's going to come at you. What's going to hit you in your face. What to prepare for. Obviously, you do your best in life to, hey, I think in the future this is going to be what I want. This is what I want for myself, my family. This is the particular um, schooling I want to do. This is the particular job set I want to do. This is about how much money I want to make. This is what I'm preparing myself for. But life has so many things up its sleeve. It, it's never exactly the way that you want it. So even that job that you've worked so hard to get, maybe you just don't have the right experience, even though you have the qualifications school-wise. Or maybe you have the experience, but they do, you don't have the right degree for it. And they're always going about these different things that you need to fulfill their particular way that they want particular things done. And you have to kind of follow the system that has been up, set up before you. And you may not have the right tools for that system. But always, in every situation, you seem to have to know the right people. So even if you've prepared yourself all along the way with the right skills and the right experience and the right degree and the right everything leading up to it, if you don't know the right person, the person next to you that is also applying for the same job will, will be able to get it ahead of you no matter what. And that's just kind of the way things work. So, so the trickster of the future not only applies to education, schooling, jobs, but it applies to your personal life as well. When am I going to meet the right person that I want to spend the rest of my life with? When am I going to start this particular way of life? What, what kind of values do I have that will affect my future? That, that's all having to do with the trickster, right? And if you don't prepare yourself well enough, oh, is it going to flip you upside down? Because there's so many things in life that can go in so many different directions. Today you could wake up with with a serious disease and and it could be a, a life altering and you would not be able to handle it sometimes. So you gotta prepare yourself for even those situations. And that's what I want to talk about with the trickster here. Now you're thinking to yourself, what is the goddess or what is the valiant? Now the goddess is of course the past. So what I mean by that is like everybody looks up to the past, right? They see the things that we, we've done, that the world has done, that our country has done, and we hold some of them at high value and some of them we learn from, right? It might, may not be high value in the sense of like something good that they did, but it's something we'd be like, we can learn from that and we can change our actions according to that. So it's kind of like this this long sense mystical past that we can just draw from. We can't prove that it was there except by having been there ourselves so you can't be like yeah 2000 years ago there was an ancient civilization over in this little area right here you don't know you weren't there nobody alive today at at this present time was there right so it except like i mean if you're some kind of special <laughs> being that we don't we don't know about but otherwise um just saying it's 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 long been forgotten right and you just kind of have to rely on on the text and the information that you've you've acquired to know if that's real or not and or if it's helpful or not so the the goddess of course is one that kind of it has to do with also like god religion right so is those things in the past that these people have done long ago? You have to decide for yourself. You know, is this is this true? Is this something that is this these um, religions or any of these things? Do they speak to me? And you'll be able to use that to 
track your behavior and how you want to live out the rest of your life and maybe help others if you feel strongly enough about it right and we see all around the world how much that affects people in the world so and that's all because of the past all things that have gone on you know so what what is nowadays well nowadays is the value right everybody's trying to live the best way that they know how to them some people have that kind of misconstrued and they think the best way to live is by tearing other people down or by just fending for themselves and or um, being a, even in uh, major cases murderers or, or thieves or corporate businessmen. Um, in any of those cases, right, they're trying to do the best that they can with what they think, hey, this will be the best, right? Most likely for themselves, maybe not for others, but then there are others out there that are trying to live the best in the present now for others' sake, which is, which is great, you know? There are people that we read about in history that gave of themselves for, for the present, for the people now that needed their help. You know, great examples such as Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Jesus Christ, all these people that were great, great historical figures, not only um, biblical figures for, for some of them, but, but for the sense that they were historically, hey, we're trying to help the people now, and we're trying to do what we do now so that we can, we can affect the future, but it all is going on right now. And you've got to think to yourself, what is the best path for me to go on right now? And how can I help not only in myself, but others around me? And how can I be a good example to, to my family or my friends, etc., etc.? That's the value, right? That is, that is the present. Um, from day-to-day -day life, obviously you want to prepare for the future. But you can't really prepare for the future if you haven't prepared for the now. If you haven't done the things now that need to be taken care of. So yeah, you're preparing yourself for the future. The trickster's got a few things up his sleeve. Life has a few futuristic things that you just don't know what's going to come or what's going to hit you. But in, in the present time, that's what you need to work on the most, right? You need to be here and now and realize that here and now is also your health, your, your current job, working as hard as you can now, your schooling, and your love life and making sure that you're treating your spouse or your companion with with the best possible integrity and love and friendship and everything else because now is where you're going to have those memories and those feelings right you don't have a you don't have a memory of the future because it hasn't happened yet obviously you have a memory of the past but it's no longer happening so you have the most memory of the now what are you thinking right now that is the, that is what you're thinking that is your <laughs> that is your thought process going on right now so I just want to talk about that triad and how each one kind of affects the other one yes the past affects the future what you do in the future will become the past eventually and what you're doing now will also become the past I mean this moment now only lasts for now and then it becomes the past so even just watching the beginning of the video there's now the past for you and so will, will you have learned from what I have said who knows right and yes now affects the future as well because hey what you do now will have effect in the future so all of them kind of affect each other in the same way as the triad here the goddess the trickster and the valiant they kind of all are affecting each other they caused a big war in palamecia you know they're not someone you want to get on their bad side with and who knows what's going to go on with the warrior of light blank here if he's gotten on their bad side or if he's doing exactly what they want or if they're falling into his hands so i've just got the goddess's might to go through next and once I finish the Goddess's Might, it looks like we got quite a bit of things coming through here as well. All the good treasures have already been taken. So let's get through... Oh, let's... Oh, come on. Let's get through the Goddess's Might, and then after that, I'll unlock that gate beyond the Goddess's Gate and go to the Goddess's Throne. And then I'm sure there's going to be a cutscene right afterwards. Other than that, my weekend's been pretty good. I've been able to play some video games. Um, still playing... Paper Mario Color Splash. It's really fun, really cute. I streamed some more World of Final Fantasy. If you weren't able to check that out, yeah, you can go on my channel and see the last three live streams. Each lasts about two to two and a half to three hours long. And I mainly just go through the main portion of the game. I do all the grinding and all the side stuff on my on my own time, so you guys don't have to worry about that. So you mostly see the storyline. If I get stuck in a certain zone or certain place, that that rarely happens, but if it does, you, you know, you could just skip ahead in the video, like, five minutes, and I found my way through whatever it was. 
and I love World of Final Fantasy. So cute, so chibi, and and you'll see in the future, you'll see me live stream more of that. So you should check that out. There's also a giveaway video for this month. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, it's called the Top 3 Hopes for Final Fantasy 15. I'm just doing a giveaway of a Final Fantasy figurine. Um, they come from the World of Final Fantasy game, and if you'd like one of those, you want a chance to win one of those, then all you have to do is check out that video, Top 3 Hopes for Final Fantasy 15, and like it, be a subscriber, and comment on what you hope to see in Final Fantasy 15. You know, pretty simple steps, but I'm sure that if you win, you'll be happy that you did it. The, just the simple steps. So we're going to move right along here into the goddess's throne. Let's see if we actually fight any of the gods this time. I'm going to guess that we don't, that it's just going to be more creatures. But I wonder if at the cutscene at the end will get revealed who they are or what their reason was or anything like that that could really kind of make this whole kind of thing worth the the effort that we just put into everything. Obviously, a summon ticket is worth the effort, but I'm saying storyline-wise, if there's anything more. Okay, let's see what Echo's saying. Are the gods watching? Someone is, even if it isn't the triad. Still, whoever they may be, if they're so interested in watching me fight, the least I can do is keep them entertained. Okay, so moving right along. Okay, it looks like just some regular enemies here, but there's three rounds, so maybe we'll fight like a boss that's pretty intense. The reason I do the harder stuff first is so I can do this last video as quick as possible and get this ending out. So you guys, if you want to see, to see the ending, it gets there with also me reiterating my point pretty easily and fast. I think this video's only been like, what, 10 minutes? Then again, yeah, that's in the past, so who cares, right? We're almost at the end of this. <laughs> uh, earlier this week, it was pretty crazy when I did the Final Fantasy Brave Exvius video. Somebody said my laugh was like Kefka. I think I mentioned this before too, but I don't even know if I laugh like Kefka. I mean, I have a deep throated laugh, and then I have my regular like high pitched laugh. And I don't know, maybe it's my high pitched laugh that sounds like Kefka when I go like, <laughs> but like that doesn't even sound real, right? That sounds like that's just like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. That doesn't. But, like, my deep throat one's, like, now I can't even do it right now unless I'm, like, actually laughing. But you can decide for yourself if you play Final Fantasy VI and Kefka. And, I mean, okay, so we're fighting a behemoth. Easy boss here. He's going to go down. And we've got the cutscene right afterwards, I'm sure. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We get a Mog Amulet from the chest, some crystals. Well, since you've now visited all three thrones, I guess the feast is over. What about the Triad Seals? I guess your fighting here wasn't enough to break them. I'm not sure if I'm relieved or disappointed, honestly. They were getting stronger, I could feel it. I'm not sure I like the fact that my fighting here fed them power. You cannot escape fate. That is your role as the Warrior of Light. Echo, are you? With each... As each battle you fight, we gain power. The people of Palmysia gain hope. With each mighty struggle, you give others invaluable strength. That is both the gift and curse of the Warrior of Light. Sounds like you don't have much of a choice. If that's what it takes, then fine. I don't particularly like giving power to gods, I don't even know. But if it can somehow help people in this world, then I'll fight. Fate be damned. Well, there we go. Oh, here's a cutscene. Why don't you call it a day and rest? Can I even do that? Would Palamecia forgive me if I so much as thought about taking a break from the fighting? Of course you're allowed to rest. Fighting can take quite the toll. Can I rest forever, then? Sure, but you'll lose hope. So, I don't even feel hopeful now. I don't mean the hope that you feel yourself. I mean the hope that you inspire in others. If you gave up fighting, then that goes away. Just remember that Palamecia doesn't take kindly to those who lose hope. Is this a guilt trip? Think of it what you want, but promise me one thing. Just because your fighting can inspire people, don't be an idiot and pick fights with every single fiend you meet along the way, okay? 
Right. I promise not to be that idiot. Region complete. You completed the infinite arena. Not so infinite, was it? Talking about infinity, past, present, and future. Forever going, right? Let's see. Let's check out the map as a full. Thanks for watching. This has been Malavar TC1. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you around in future videos. Thanks.